Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, Tony, thousands of young wrestlers have all descended on Fargo, North Dakota, the dome there. 17 cadets have been crowned freestyle national champions. The star of the show was Minnesota's Carson Manville. The tournament's outstanding wrestler put up seven bonus point victories and outscored his opponent 77-3. to yeah, Manville is just nasty. He's taken where his brother left off now at Penn State. You know, He won the cadet Pan Am just a couple weeks prior to this. What I like about him is he's just not... He's not afraid to let it fly. He'll right. he'll put guys on their dome if he wants to. Small little guy, but he's able. To, he's got. He packs a punch. Looking up at that stage after tons of years, and finally getting on it was amazing. Because I kept looking at it every day, leading to this day when we were wrestling to get to the finals, and it just made me happier every time I got closer. What would it mean to you to come out here and win two titles? Come out here to win two titles. I'd be. I, I don't know a word that would explain how happy I'd be. I'd be able to look at my older brother and say, hey, I did better than you. <laughs> Another rising star at the cadet level is West Virginia's Braxton Amos at 200 pounds. Now in the finals, he faced Illinois strongman Luke Luffman and controlled the match clear up till the exclamation point. A five-point move. That's what it was. He picked up the stop sign. Now, uh, after 300, 305 days today, uh, it's, it's awesome. It's a nice way how I want to start my uh, high school career, hopefully. You know, making it more impressive for Amos. You know, he's he's just been battling through a knee in, injury for the last year or so. You know, for him to uh, come in here through the injuries to get it done, this really has made him now a top prospect. You know, these coaches are all there. Him to come in there, do it twice. Big, big guy name. Tons of good storylines coming out of Fargo. The next one has to be Illinois' lightweights. They picked up titles at 100, 113, and 138. Perhaps the most impressive young man was Dylan Raguson. He was a Greco national champ last year, if you recall. But to get that stop sign this year, he had to go through another tough young man out of Michigan, Andrew Shamble, who was a Cadet World team member. Why was it important for you to come here? Just uh, more matches, the better. You know, it's the toughest competition you can get around in the country, freestyle and Greco-wise. Just uh, coming out here, putting my toes in the test, you know. I, I don't try to run from anybody, but uh, coming here is a way to prove that you, you, you're the one of the best in the country. This year they switched the, the two styles where they went freestyle first and Greco. What were your thoughts? It, it, it doesn't bother me as a competitor. You know, uh, wrestling's wrestling. You know, everyone's tired in the matches. Everyone has those bombs, those sores, those bruises. Yeah. It's just the people that can really fight through them, and those are the best. What was your mindset coming into the tournament? You know, knowing you wanted to still prepare for world, was there something that you really wanted to work on before getting here? Just uh, competing, you know? Uh, I love competing, I love the sport of wrestling, so uh, just coming out here is fun for me. Just getting matches and getting better. With these lightweights, you just really never know how they're going to transition up a weight class, right? So, I mean, they're still kind of small. 125 is a, is a big weight jump here. So, um, Greco, freestyle, national champ, anytime, I don't care what weight you are, the coaches are going to recognize. And this guy's got to go on. Well, Illinois was matched by Missouri with three champions, Joshua Saunders at 126, Devin Winston at 182, and Ashton Sharp at 195. Illinois, though, was a little too much overall once again as they picked up their fifth consecutive freestyle team title in the cadet division. Now, after the break, we're going to stay in Fargo. We'll talk a little more about that. We'll hear from the very first Kentucky Cadet National Champion, Zeke Escalera. You're watching DWN, powered by Coke. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. 
I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting and you should too. Well, for the first time in event history, Kentucky left Fargo with a Cadet Nationals champion. Zeke Escalera would not be denied in his 106-pound final match against Matthew Ramos of Illinois. Escalera's title didn't come easy, though. He had shootouts with Woods of Ohio in round 16. He had to put up 18 points to defeat Illinois Zerbin, 18-13, and squeak past returning national champion Cullen Shreve, 9-7, in the semis. Escalera's easiest bout came in the finals where he dominated and went big against against Ramos and won that one by Tech Fall 11-0. You're the first national champion from Kentucky. What does that feat mean to you? Oh, it's amazing. You know, I've, I look up to a lot of the kids that are a lot of the guys that wrestled before me and then to know that I did something that they did, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Well, another state not used to bringing home state crowns is South Dakota. For the second time in state history, Nash Hetmacher was able to bring home a title for South Dakota at 285 pounds. This was not your normal, boring heavyweight match. Hutmacher hit takedown after takedown after takedown. All four of his takedowns were, get this, for four points. Man, Tony, that's a whole ton of stars. <laughs> yeah, he just brought the house down. You see a guy, you know, that big, on that big stage, You'll, a young guy trying to make a name for his name. This was not your stereotypical match. I mean, this was not boring whatsoever. Right. And you know what else South Dakota, the other the other champ was? Lincoln McAvery. Wow. Not not a bad name to follow footsteps, right? Five-time South Dakota State champ, three-time NCAA champ for Iowa, Olympic bronze medalist. So, but separated know, by generations. Oh, yeah, a long, long ways yeah. away. But, you know, if you're going to win a national title, I'm not a bad guy to follow footsteps. Well, enough from us. Let's hear from the champ. He just kind of makes blasted yeah. through completely. Was that the game plan going in? Yeah, game plan going in was just keep it aggressive. I'm, I usually wrestle pretty aggressive style in the game plan going in. was just get to my shots and keep the tempo moving. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see our All-American and one of your shots to make it kind of a close match. That's Finishing the game plan from Illinois, All-American all James Henry. That kind of stuff happens in match. I mean, it happens, and then you really do about it. You just got to keep, keep it going and score more points. In sixth place, real strong doubles. Where does that come from? Like, how much do you work on on those doubles? Huh? How much do you work on that double? That I drill that double leg so much. That high crotches, but that that's probably my best shot. Is that last double leg. So what are you looking forward to most coming into the tournament? Coming into the tournament, looking forward to most just wrestling our best in the nation, seeing what happens. All right, congratulations to all of our Cadet Freestyle National Champions. You're watching Global Wrestling News. I invite you to stay tuned. I want to thank our sponsors, Pure and Clean Sports. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie.
What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin, Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out, pureandcleansports.com. The Cadet and Junior National Championships are where many stars are born, but one of our greatest wrestlers in U.S. history has never won a Cadet or Junior National title. That man is six-time Olympic and world champ John Smith with Oklahoma State. Now, USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel caught up with him inside the Fargo Dome and talked to him about his experience as a competitor and what he's now looking for as a coach. All right, I have the legend himself, John Smith in the house, Fargo Dome. Yes, we have the go pokes over here. Go um, pokes, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you're in Fargo. Tell me what you're doing in town. Well, um, you know, this is a big recruiting weekend, and uh, I don't know if there's a tournament more important to be at than this one. You know, all year long, uh, you get a chance to see uh, a lot of kids compete at a high level, and and really, I you know, looking at the field this year. You know, I think it's as strong as as deep as it's been in probably six six eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we've had some last few years it, it hadn't been as strong, but it's good to see that these kids are coming back and recognizing uh, that you can be seen here. You know, you don't come here, then I kind of question whether you how hard you want to wrestle or how deep you want to take your wrestling. All right. So, what um, from a recruiting perspective from the Cowboys? How much emphasis do you place on this event and how you do here? We, we put a lot of emphasis on it, you know, and I think it's it's um, it's something that, you know, you just want to see them compete in big-time tournaments, and this is the biggest event we have probably in, in high school wrestling. So given that not everyone is going to come out here and win the tournament, how do you evaluate, you know, when you're looking at talent, is there anything specifically you're looking for, you know, outside of the wins and losses? I'm looking for the kid that uh, not necessarily is a great freestyle wrestler, but but um, it, it gets in these type of rounds, these these, these rounds before you become an All-American or uh, once you make it to an All-American. Uh, let's see how deep you go from that point forward. And, and winning and losing is not nearly as important as how you compete. You just watch how they compete and, and see what they're made out of. Did you ever wrestle in, in this tournament? Junior wrestled National? in it. All yeah. through um, high school, ninth through uh, my senior year. Um, it was back when um, it was just a high school division. So as a freshman, you wrestled them all. You know, you didn't yeah. wrestle age group. Uh, placed in it, took fourth uh, twice, took fourth as a junior, and, and took fourth as a senior. Never won it. Um, and um, one of the few things I didn't win. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I remind my, my, uh, my student athletes who come here, um, you know, Kay Brock was uh, one that uh, never never won it, you right. know, and it was something he has, was a long-term goal for him. And I just kind of reminded him that, um, you know, this is, a, this is a tough tournament, and what you need to learn is uh, why you didn't win it, and, and let's go to work on those things. So this will expose you pretty quickly about where you're at, uh, both mentally, physically, and technically, this tournament definitely will expose a young kid. Do you have a favorite match from your time at this tournament? Um, the, the, when I wrestled it? Yeah, when you wrestled no, it. No, you know, the, when it got critical, I didn't win them. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was glad I changed it as I got older. But, mm -hmm. um, no, this was a hard, hard, uh, heartache for me, you know, something that uh, all my brothers won, Junior Nationals, Leroy and – and uh, Pat and Mark, uh, all three of three of them won, and I was the only one that never won one. <laughs> you know, so uh, losing in kind of at the critical time for mm -hmm. me, um, when it got real, real tough, uh, I got beat. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
Um, but looking back, you know, it really made a difference for me as, uh, as I moved forward from this tournament, you know, recognizing that um, at the most important time, I, I wasn't there. I, I wasn't mentally there, mm -hmm. you know, maybe emotionally a little bit nervous or, you know, or just, just immature maybe, you know, but um, should have won, but, but didn't. So, um, you know, those are, those are things you look back on that, that might have helped me uh, become the two-time Olympic gold medalist. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, since I got here, you brought it up. So we got the world championships coming up. Got eight guys we're sending over. What do you think about those guys? You know, I'm pretty excited about this team, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I'm just excited, you know. I just think we can't overlook and, and just assume we have a good team. I've, I've seen I've seen it in the past where I felt like we had a really good team and, and, didn't, and didn't recognize how tough the world was, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes you forget that, um, you know, especially being a college coach and spending 95% of your time working with collegiate athletes. Um, you get away from that that level, especially during the, the the academic year, and you just forget how tough it is, you know. So, um, but I'm excited, you know, and and this is this is a hopefully a team that, uh, you know, um, that can win a championship, and we need to win championships again in freestyle. Um, they're hard to win, and you know we haven't won many of them. I think we've won two, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, I, I think this level of athlete that we have right now is exciting. And I think that um, with Bill Zadick leading the show, um, he, there's, he's been instrumental in several of those guys that are on this team. Um, so I think we got a great coach and uh, I think we got a great team. And um, really, I think if people uh, uh, want to go see some of the best wrestling in the world, um, this was this is going to be a great event in Paris. So um, don't miss it. Yeah, free excuse to go to Paris, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I appreciate you it. Bet. Pleasure as always. Thank you. Yep. Well, the Bonus Points podcast has been featuring these bonus bites from various wrestling meets across the country about their Fargo experience. Head on over to themat.com to hear more from the likes of Chris Bono, Tony Ramos, Jared Freyer, Julia Salata, Brent Metcalf, and many others. Special thanks to Richard Emmel and USA Wrestling for that interview. That's it for Fargo for this week. We'll have junior freestyle highlights and interviews on Takedown TV next week. And up after the break, quick hits from around our sport. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Fairway. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so defend what you have built. More news out of Oklahoma. A lifelong cowboy has accepted a position in Sooner Country. After 17 years in Stillwater, Eric Guerrero has accepted the head coaching position for the Oklahoma Regional Training Center. The three-time national champ first joined the OSU staff back in 2000 and was widely considered the Cowboys head coach in waiting. So what happened, Tony? I imagine Eric has been offered plenty of head coaching positions in the past, so 
Why this one and why now? I mean, I could have swore that I asked Eric on Takedown Radio less than a year ago if uh, you know he would be willing to take another job somewhere, and I, I think he laughed at me. Like he was just shocked that I even was asking this question or bring it up. I mean, he was. Everyone thought the guy waiting in the, in, the, in the wings, right? I mean, he was the associate head coach, so they just assumed that he'd be the guy. But he's been there 17 years. Right. So sometimes you just kind of want the glory. You want to get outside of probably John Smith's shadow. He's, I mean, he wrestled there too. So change it up a little bit, get out of the orange, get over to uh, the maroon. All right, so for those of you who are watching this and may not know, how much involvement can an RTC coach have with the collegiate program? Well, they're really zero. Um, they, they, I mean, they're going to have a little bit of a footprint on it. I mean, they can't uh, recruit the college kids, but with the RTC, as soon as those college kids or high school kids around the area go to the RTC practice, that's when Eric Guerrero and likes that these RTC can get their hands on them. I mean, heck, at Iowa, since uh, they've, they've hired Mark Perry to come in, there's been three big recruits that have said that the biggest reason why they're coming is because of Mark Perry. I think the RTC movement is great for the sport, but it's going to create an even bigger gap between the haves and the have-nots. Are you concerned that we might lose programs that can't afford a regional training center? I think this is going to affect the smaller programs or the, the programs that don't have a coach that's not going out there and willing to attack it, willing to make it work. This is a huge opportunity for them right. to fundraise, right? Not through the university. They can be a separate entity, and all that money can go through wrestling, can go through their facility, do whatever they want to do with it. So, I mean, not every school is going to be able to go out and get a million-dollar budget like Penn State, Iowa. I mean, they're not there yet, I don't think, but um, you just got to go out there and get it. And what's what, what possibly could happen, these coaches could, you know, whine a little bit, go to the NCAA, and the NCAA could possibly look into this RT situation a little bit to see if there is any, you know, um, things that are not NCAA eligible. Okay. All right. Two times Super 32 challenge champ Joey Silva has verbally committed to wrestle for Michigan. Silva is ranked ninth overall in the class of 2018, already a four-time Florida State champ. He'll likely go in at 141 for the Wolverines. Pretty nice score for the Mays and Blue. Yeah, this is a this is a big get. His only loss last year was to world champ Spencer Lee. Everyone's heard of Spencer Lee. I've so, lost to Spencer Lee. Yeah, not not a bad uh, loss to take. You know, Michigan's no stranger to taking guys out of Florida. You know, Silva picked up... Uh, Picked this this uh, college over the likes of North Carolina, Arizona State, Nebraska, Purdue, Virginia Tech, even. So there was this is a big get for them. He was he was going to go to a big school. Michigan got one here. You know, the writing I think is on the wall. This should be a top ten program this year, especially with the return of Adam Kuhn, Alec Pantaleo. They'll be back in the lineup as well. Yeah, don't forget Stephen Michek. He's going to be there. He's got three years left on his eligibility. I, I feel like he's been around forever at Michigan, so it's going to be really interesting to see what the coach decides to do or what the kids decide to do around 130, 141, see if they can get all three of these guys in the lineup here in the next couple of years. Well, big news now to California, Fresno State head coach Troy Steiner has announced the addition of Joe Colon to the Bulldogs staff. A 2014 grad of Northern Iowa, Colon spent the past season working under Nick Mitchell at Grandview. Colon currently holds a record for the highest winning percentage in Northern Iowa history and placed second at the 2015 World Team Trials. I'm happy for him, and Grandview, I'd say, it was really kind of a stepping stone for him to get into the college ranks. His brother was there, able to coach him to a national title. I talked to Steiner a little bit, and his biggest focus to, to, to getting Joe here was that not only is he going to be a big leader as a coach, but he's still competing on the senior level. That's something that I didn't think that we were going to have. Didn't have the best world team trials here in Lincoln, so I kind of thought he might hang it up. But if there's a guy that can turn it around, knows that weight class, Steiner's the guy. All right, the word is out there. Wrestlers who violate NCAA weight protocols will now face stiffer penalties this year. The NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel approved a penalty change that requires a wrestler to miss eight consecutive competitions for a first offense in a full year with the second offense. The panel also approved a new rule giving all competitors a one-pound weight allowance when competing in back-to-back -back duels. I think, you know, the, the weights process or managing, I guess, wrestlers' weight cutting abilities, I guess, has really always been kind of a process that right. the NCAA in the high school level has had. Um, you know, they there is there's penalties for the coach now, administration. So if they take a blind eye to guys, you know, wearing rubbers or doing doing the cutting the wrong way, not following pro protocols, they're going to have to have a penalty too. Not only are the kids going to have to sit out, but the coach is going to have to sit out, and that's got to mean money for those guys. Well, they also approved an optional rule to allow a third-party official to be hired for video reviews. I don't like the word optional here, Tony. Eh? Who gets the option? Well, that's, it, that's it, kind of the yeah, situation we're already yeah, in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> it hasn't been always optional, but at the end of the day, they can't really 
force it because it's a huge expense. That's a huge expense for a lot of these colleges to, to take on the HAB tournament. Some of these guys have four to eight matches, eight, eight mats. So you're now you're adding eight officials or, or third party um, company to come in and do that. I mean, that's not going to be cheap for a full day long tournament and they got to be laser focused to get things right. No, well, believe it or not, we are out of time for this week. Congrats and good luck to all of our athletes in Fargo looking to bring home Greco titles as well. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, I'm Scott Kesper. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Global Wrestling News.